last week, All Workers Union in Nigeria, under the umbrella of Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengerson, voiced its concern over the safety of its members and threatened to strike if the federal government does not take swift action to curb all theft in the country. Nigeria's crude oil production fell below 1 million barrels per day. In August, figures from its regulators show as the nation grappled with rampant theft from its pipelines. According to data from the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, the country's total oil and condensate output dropped to an annual low of 1.18 million barrels per day in August. As it stands, it seems corruption is having a swell time in the oil sector of Nigeria. Start the cases against the, the companies that we thought were uh, selling undeclared oil, and we decided that we would sue the Nigerian subsidiaries and, and have the cases be brought and adjudicated in Nigeria. But because of the uh, what's going on and the time that's elapsed without much progress, or at least as much progress as we hoped, we've decided that we think that the better way to do it, instead of sell, suing the sellers from Nigeria, we want to engage the buyers in the United States and ask them to give us information about the transactions that occurred so that we can work backwards and find out where the money that they paid actually ended up. And we think if we do that, uh, we can then, instead of starting it in Nigeria, we can start it against the subsidiaries of the international oil companies in the United States and bring them to court in the United States where we believe we have a very, very good chance of success. Okay, thank you. From Abuja to discuss the oil theft issues in Nigeria is Honorable E.J. Agbonaima, a Federal Commissioner, Code of Conduct Bureau, and former House of Representatives member. Good morning, Honorable. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Good morning, Nigerians. Uh, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. The uh, NUPRC, uh, the Commission, uh, led by uh, <clears throat> led by uh, Mr. Komalafe, uh, Benga Komalafe, uh, has asked the Nigerian government to declare a state yeah. of emergency in the uh, oil and gas sector as a result of crude oil theft. Only last week, Pengasan, uh, senior staff of the oil and gas uh, you know uh, sector, uh, organized rallies across the country, and they are threatening to go on strike. Yeah. having given a 30-day notice. If the federal government of Nigeria does not do something about crude oil theft, the uh, uh, group general manager of NMPC Limited has also said, look, we're losing so much money, up to about uh, $700 uh, uh, million dollars per day as a result of uh, crude oil theft. So we know what the problem is. What do you think is the solution? A state of emergency? or ramping up security surveillance? Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ruben Abati. Uh, for me, I've been on this issue for so many years. Uh, we are all Nigerians, and uh, we must be responsible, accountable to our dear nation. And uh, the situation of the crude oil theft in this country is appalling, it's disheartening and it is unacceptable. Uh, I think one of the cardinal point agenda of Mr. President, President Buhari, is the fight against corruption. And if you ask me, I understand that a lot of people are trying to derail the will or progress of Mr. President. Uh, yes, the issue of the, of the oil tab didn't just start, didn't start today or yesterday. It has been ongoing for so many years. Uh, at the time, as you were listening to, uh, there's an attorney, a lawyer from the United States, engaged by the federal government, who met well uh, the former president, uh, President Jonathan, and our brother, who saw that the crude oil theft in the Niger Delta, that is Tompolo, he decided to have a good initiative. He approached Mr. Former President and said, look, we must investigate and uh, do a forensic 
you know, investigation to ascertain uh, the oil theft that is ongoing uh, because they were blaming the, uh, the militant, the oil bunker. Yes, there is oil bunker, but the most important of it all is the crude oil, undeclared crude oil that have gone to global destination, taken away by the Kaaba. So this crude oil theft is something that uh, you and I know is the one that have derailed this country from moving forward. What can we do now? Uh, I want to say that uh, those who are saying that they, they should call for state of emergency, they are not far away from the truth, but I, I wouldn't say that is the major issue now. It's for us to be to put in place preventive measure, you know, to combat the menace of corruption. Because the crude oil theft that is going through the back door outside this country, where a country uh, that does not even know, you know, the number of production that we do produce daily, uh, the metric that we use, uh, you know, to, <laughs> today, you'd be, you'd be shocked to know. The metric, the meter that they use is purchased, calibrated, owned by the multinational company to the detriment to all Nigerians. Uh, Mr. President Buhari, unfortunately, we have not been fair to him. Some of us have not been fair to Nigerians that the crude oil theft, the circle that have put the serious cabal, they know themselves. And uh, Mr. Abati, you were in government. You know, I'm happy you were in government during the time of when you were, when you served former President Jonathan. That at the end of the day, they set up, you know, an engagement with a molecular power system. They signed a contract uh, with that uh, company, which of course the company also engaged a United States firm, uh, Lumos, out of Houston, Texas, to track all vessels leaving the soil of Nigeria to global destination. Let me tell you, that will surprise you. What landed United States alone, 391 million barrels, left this country undeclared. But unfortunately, when we then called, when I was at the House of Rep, I moved that motion. When we called NAPC, but it will surprise you that uh, the information they gave us was nothing to write home about. And what the United States Customs gave us, it was mind boggling that this is Nigeria. And uh, it's so sad that uh, we meant this corruption, and when you fight corruption, corruption fight back at you. That's what I'm saying that if it's a president, he's trying his best. But those in the helm of affairs that we should be responsible, should be accountable, we have not done the needful. And uh, we call ourselves that, uh, oh, we are Nigerians, uh, you know, the biggest uh, you know, nation in Africa. You know, see, <laughs> I don't know what to say, my dear Robert Abati, and you are also aware about this. You know, during your tenure, uh, that uh, this problem of uh, oil theft is something that's eating us deep and it's continuing to eat us deep. And the truth of the matter is this the fact remains who are those responsible? We have different anti corruption agencies. We are, you know, I, I will say this without fear of favor we are a reactive nation. We are not proactive. We must put, put in place preventive measures to curtail. So that, you know, at the end of the day, we are able to solve this issue of oil theft. Yeah, we cannot remove it in totality, but we must do something about it. Because it is a, something, it's a cancer, it's a problem, the corruption in our dear nation. In every sector in our country, there's corruption. President Buhari is not the issue of corruption. He's not, the, he's not a corrupt president. I will say this without fear of favor. He's not corrupt. But I can tell you, Former president, other former head of state that derail the will of progress, moving this country forward. You know, but this is it's painful, Ruben Abati, to see our country going down. The youth are suffering. No employment. Things are getting bad. Nothing is working because somebody wants to derail the will, the progress of Mr. President's agenda. You are not derailing the president's agenda. You are derailing the will of progress of all Nigerians. Those Kaba. They know themselves. NLPC, I am only saying this. Whether you change the name, Nigerian, NLPC, Lim, Nigerian Limited, or NLPC Corporation, is not the issue. The issue is to have the commitment, the will, the tenacity, the sagacity to say, look, let's put Nigeria first. Something good can come out of Nigeria. I believe in that notion. But it is going to require a collective effort of every patriotic Nigeria.
to put Nigeria you know, first. We cannot do it alone. President Buhari cannot fight the menace of corruption alone. All of us collectively can do just that. If we do that, Nigeria will come out to be the best. Right, so is there any chance that the 30-day ultimatum issued by Pengerson will be effective given you know, the magnitude of the problem you just described? Well, uh, I want to appreciate them and uh, to thank them for their commitment as well. Uh, give it 30 days. We've heard all that over the years, you know. <laughs> Seriously, you know, Nigeria's issue is so peculiar that you don't even know where to start. Look at all the refinery. Is there anyone working? Budget are being made every year in now. What has happened to our dear nation? You know, when you fight corruption, guess what? Mr. President Boris said, if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill us. And I pray that corruption does not kill us. Because, you know, we always point a finger, oh, at the center. Guess what? When you point one finger at the others, one is pointing at you. More than even four pointing at you. Because I would say that uh, the, if they want to call for 30 days, is that the really issue? Can that solve the problem in 30 days? No. The issue that have started over the years, graduated. When you plant a tree, you plant a tree while you allow that tree to grow, like palm tree, you allow it to grow. And it's not rooted. To uproot that palm tree will be very difficult. But when it's growing, right from when it's growing, you can remove that palm tree without you know, any hindrance, without any problem. Now corruption has eaten us in every sector. I will appeal to them, look, the best thing that they have to do is that all of us that in various you know, enforcement agency, anti-corruption agency, we should stand up, rise up, to do the needful. Just look at uh, adulterated, this contaminated foil that came into this country. Who is held responsible? Who is held accountable? Nobody. When Nigerians have suffered, businessmen and women, vehicle destroyed, generator destroyed. But somebody needs to be held responsible. Somebody must be accountable for any action, every action that is right there, willing okay. to put Nigeria among the leading nation. Okay. Okay. Please. Yes. So I, I want solutions. We've romanced this problem enough. We've been able to say all the interesting things about how people don't like the country of being corrupt. What is the solution? You keep saying we don't blame President Buhari for this. But the box stops with the president. He's the leader of the country at a point in time like this that there's so much crude oil theft. So who do we blame? Should I blame you for it? What's the solution to the problem? That's what I'm asking. You know, how blame, can we fight we this blame, big cabal? Yeah, we, Don't tell me to blame. Let's not blame the cabal because they are the one perpetrator. How can we bring them down? So who should we blame here? Listen, we should blame every one of us, including you and I. All of us, seeing a crime be committed, refusing to report the scene of that crime to the nearest law enforcement agency, you are as guilty as the man or woman who committed that crime. So we are all responsible. We have not been able to tell the way it is. I am saying the truth must be put on the table. Yes, the crude oil tear did not, it didn't start today. It has been ongoing. The solution is very clear. If there are consequences, when somebody is caught stealing, that person should go for it, face the wrath of the law. We have a, a lot of laws. Look at the other day, I'm watching a former Accountant General of the Federation. When you have stolen billions, hundreds of billions, uh, you go to the court, Baba Riga and Smiley. Uh, uh, now, the question is this. The, sol the solution is this. The solution is for us, all the various anti-corruption agency, the judiciary should rise up, stand up. The anti-corruption agency, we all should rise up, stand up. If anyone found one thing, and they face the wrath of the law, and they face the consequences, and they are jailed, I tell you, all this nonsense will stop. Can, can, can I ask a follow-up? shouting and crying. Can, the can solution is very clear. I'd like to ask a follow-up. So is it that you're saying now, yes. because you keep saying, let's not blame the president, is it that you're saying that this unnamed cabal is more powerful than the president? Are you saying no, that President Buhari cannot bring I've them down before. today if they want to? Is that what we're saying here? Because I don't understand what you're saying. You're saying they should blame me? What role have I got to play there when we have security agents that are supposed to protect our life and property? 
You're saying they should blame the citizens, the poor Nigerians that don't even let know me, how these things are being Let me tell you. Let me, what are you saying? The president listen, is there. He should lead the listen way. Listen to me. I, I, I'm, I, I, I myself, I'm a journalist, I say. Once upon a time, I own a TV station in America. Let me tell you, there's what we call investigative journalism. Investigative journalism. Not only sitting in your studio, you must go out there to do your investigation. Watch CNN. When they take on issues, they do a proper investigation. Not just only hearsay. So you have your own facts and figure. It's going to require collective effort of everyone. But I'm happy that Arise Television is rising to that standard. And I'm proud to have you all you know, in partnership with what is happening in Nigeria. Because that's what I said, I was going to take collective effort of every Nigerian. Seeing a crime be committed and refusing to report that scene of crime, we are all guilty as charged. But the, but the president now, is the minister of petroleum. It. The president I, I, is the I, minister I, of petroleum. Listen to, hold, hold on, listen. The president have appointed us, all of us, in different capacity. Some are doing very well, some are doing... Just nothing. So if we support Mr. President, Mr. President cannot be in Abuja, be in Sokoto, and be in Lagos, and be in Benin. But we that are being appointed, we should do our job and do it certainly and prove beyond reasonable doubt that, look, we are here to serve. Serve the country, not just serve the president. Serve this country. Serve Nigerians. Serve our people. I am weeping. Look, this issue is beyond you and I. This issue has eaten us deeply over the years. Let me tell you the motion that I moved in 2016, thereabout, and up to 2017-18, the problem of cruel air theft is still ongoing. What did they do? They are blaming, oh, the bunkery is the problem. Yes, there's bunkery. The major oil theft is the one taken through the back door. Listen to me. This 41 country investigated, investigated where different countries, billions of dollars go to voicemail. The crude oil theft that landed, the crude oil that landed in America, purchased, the seller, the buyer, they are both guilty as charged. Money was paid to banks, Citibank, Chase Bank in America. Is that money made for you and I? Have Nigeria got that money? So the question, we know the problem. The problem is NFPC must come out clean. They must come out clean. They can't continue to tell us, oh, you know, there's a you know, bunkery here and there. Why can't they talk about the one that is going through the back door? The major one that is going through the back door. The, the, the one that you see people, they are arresting young men and women that are doing bunkery. Yes, once they are arrested, they should be prosecuted. And those that have taken the same crude oil through the back door, the IOC with the carniva of our Nigerian people, it takes two to tango. It do. It does take two to tango. We are blaming, you know, one certain individual. We are pointing finger. We have 36 state government, governors, I mean. 36 state governors. We keep on blaming the center. But if all of us could together come together, the governor, the president, the local government, the senator, the House of Rep, all of the above, House okay. of Assembly, we come together to fight this menace of corruption. Okay. There we will find solution to it. Okay. We, without doing that, it is a mockery to ourselves, not Mr. President issue, not only my issue, it is your issue, it is President's issue, it is Nigerian problem that we must solve it. Okay. It's a cancer that's eating us deeply, corruption. Corruption is the major problem. Okay. In every sector, not just only you know, NLPC, across the board. Okay. What are we talking about? You're talking about the crude oil, talking about the, the issue of uh, the contaminated fuel that came to this country. Have we heard anybody responsible? They are blaming innocent people. Those who have nothing to do with it, those are the ones they are parading. When those who did it, they know it. We know them. What have they done to them? So enough is enough. It's not about talking and talking. I want solution myself. I want solution. Instead of doing the right thing, cases, when they come, they killed all these cases. Why well, do you not blame one man? How can you blame one man? That is the problem of Nigeria. Okay. The problem of Nigeria is all of us. 
Okay. We should rise up and face the truth. Well, uh, it's not Mr. President, Mr. President, but it's not a trial. Honorable Agbonayima, I think your point is well made. After all, the uh, GMD of uh, NMPC Limited, uh, you know, reported the other day that even churches and mosques are involved in this uh, crude oil uh, theft and they collude with people. Pengasan told us that Nigerian soldiers that are sent uh, to uh, protect the maritime uh, area of Nigeria, that they are the ones, in fact, uh, stealing the, uh, uh, the crude. But in the face of all this, uh, NMPC was saying that once the Dangote refinery comes on stream, uh, you know, and uh, the refineries are also fully refurbished, we will not have problem with at least, you know, having to import uh, fuel from abroad. But the problem is that all the depots in the country are down because of pipeline vandalism. Because those pipelines are being attacked at every point, not to even talk of the international theft, the stealing of uh, undeclared oil. Can you tell us in specific terms, you know, what needs to be done? Because if you say, oh, just bring the oil thieves uh, to book, well, you know, in this country, nobody is ever brought to any book. In fact, the book itself, you know, is not available. Okay? So what are those specific things that you think we still need to do? Do we need to upgrade infrastructure? Do we need to deploy technology? Or it's simply a problem of political will? Specific items. Thank you very much, Dr. Abati. If you are talking about political will, I think we do have political will. That's the reason why I'm here. I've been invited on several occasions. I refuse to come. And I'm just telling you, it's painful and it's sad. Solution, in every problem, there are solutions. Just to be able to ascertain, to identify the solution to the problem. We know we have a serious problem at hand. If he's saying that churches, mosques are involved in the oil bunkering, he's not just saying it. You must be able to identify those that are responsible, accountable, that have committed that hilarious uh, offense. So that it can be brought to book, even though you say that the book is not available. Definitely, in this government, in my, you know, Code of Conduct Bureau, we have the book. Anyone found wanting should be prosecuted. So I don't want us to just name. We must be able to identify those that are really the will of progress or moving this country forward. If any pastors or imam is found, they should be apprehended. So not to say, like. The issue, like I keep on saying, the issue, the contaminated fuel that came into the country. See, tomorrow, nobody has been held responsible. When Nigeria have lost trillions, businesses are paying the price for it. Nigerians are paying the price for it. So the solution remains. We have laws. We have our constitution. That is a total guide. We have ICPC, we have EFCC, we have Code of Conduct Bureau, we have the police, and guess what? They are doing their best. The more you fight corruption, the more corruption fight back at you. Today, if we are talking about moving forward, let us not have this blame game. Let us come in, on the table to outline and agree on the way forward how to curtail this menace. It can be resolved by having the willingness, that is the commitment to put this country as one of the best nations in the world. It is possible, it is doable, it is achievable. But to keep on having blame game will not take us anywhere. What I'm saying is that if we have laws, we have laws, and we refuse to obey the law, stealing when you now go about engaging yourself in illegal activity in the oil bunker, you are arrested. I want to see a situation where they are prosecuted and jailed. When people steal 10,000 naira, they are in prison. Those who stole 10,000, those who stole 1 million, they are in prison. Those who are stealing billions, they are walking free and wearing barbariga and going to court smiling like they are a hero. 
that God is told so much. Now, if we now have consequences, when you are arrested, you are caught, you will face the wrath of the law, and you will be sent to jail, there must be repercussion for every offense committed. When there is no consequences, what do you expect? So it's free for all. It is free for all. We must abide by the rule of law. Because if not, all this we are saying, having 30 days notice or 20 days notice will not solve the problem. What will solve the problem is for us to follow the rule of law and follow it to the latter. That we must obey the law and failure to do so. In America, where I live for almost 31 years, if you commit an offense, you go in for it. Aaron, Aaron committed an offense, tried to derail the will of progress of Nigeria. They came to this country, defrauded Nigeria. The United States prosecuted those that were involved in America. They were sentenced to jail. But those that were involved in Nigeria, they are going, walking around with Rolls Royce limousine and all that. That is a breakdown of rule you know, of law. Because we have refused to adhere to the three principles of democratic tenets, loyalty, participation, and commitment to your dear nation. If you have that in the back of your mind, you know that you are a true patriotic Nigerian. If you don't have that, you believe that it's, it's you by you and of you, then we have ourselves to blame. We must work as a collective effort whether you are APC, PDP, Afghan, Labour, if you don't belong to any political party, you are a Nigerian. Whether you are Muslim or Christian, you are a Nigerian. This country belongs to you, it belongs to me, it belongs to all of us. We must rise. When you have something, you have a gold in your hand, like Nigeria. Nigeria is a gold. You protect it. You guide it to make sure nothing happens to it. Of course, some of us say, no, let's break it. Let's steal it. At the end of the day, we are killing ourselves. We are our worst enemy. I must say this. Until we realize that we have no other country, that this country belongs to us, to serve this nation, require all of us together as one family. I don't know whether you are outside Yoruba or Igbo. I see you as a brother, as a Nigerian, that we must work together. Dr. Ruben Abati, I know you very well. You said you did your best, but I'm telling you, oh yeah, Bokri, when you were government, it existed even more than any, any time of the year. It existed during your tenure. That was the reason our brother, Tom Polo, went to Mr. President, we must investigate this issue of blaming the, milita the military, Bokri. The oil theft is not the military alone. The major oil theft are done by those who have money. The Kaba, at the end of the day, it came to pass. President Jonathan approved that contract and paid the contractor to investigate all the clear crude oil that left this country. To the greatest surprise and dismay, to surprise you, the report, this is the report, it was addressed to me when I was the chairman of U.S. Nigerian relation in the House of Red. The report was addressed to me. It's mind-boggling. It's sad. It's so painful. This was not done during Buhari. It was done in other administration. They have good detention. Yes, former President Jonathan had good detention. That's why he engaged molecular power system and Lomos. Well. And they did a wonderful job. I traveled wow. to America for more than four times with the help of Attorney General. That is the SAM Malami. Look, this issue here we are talking, it's not only just on television. Okay, on that note. We uh, need to sit down and do more. Do investigative journalism, do your part, I do my part, the judiciary will do their part, the law enforcement will do their part. The anti-corruption will do their part. The civil society will do their part. The religious brothers and sisters will do their part. All of us put together. Okay, on that note, on that note, Honorable Agwena Yema would like to thank you very much for joining us on The Morning Show today. <laughs>